Today I'm going to talk about a little bit of, uh, about the work that we've been doing on uh, tape and especially the software side of it, like how we are uh, enabling uh, tape in, for new use cases uh, using software. And in particular, I'm going to talk about LTFS data management, which is an extension to LTFS that uh, bridges uh, tape to disk. So to start, I'd like to point out how the, tape, the tide has uh, turned for tape. Uh, since uh, about 10 years ago when Jim Gray uh, predicted that uh, the death of tape. Since then, and over the last uh, 12 years, uh, uh, tape uh, has seen a lot of new use cases in, in clouds, and especially in large public cloud environments. And uh, Microsoft is predicting that it's going to grow in the cloud in, uh, to a scale that has uh, never been seen before. So uh, we see uh, tape becoming uh, very important because it's today it's the only uh, storage medium that can you know store all these uh, vast amounts of data in an economical way. And uh, the purpose of our work uh, that I'm going to talk about is to enable these new, new use cases of tape in uh, software that uh, kind of fits into the cloud model. So. The advantages of tape uh, are well known and uh, understood, so it has a very uh, good uh, uh, capacity density because it has compression and very high uh, uh, recording density. It's very energy efficient because it doesn't uh, burn any power while you're not using it. Uh, it has very good security because uh, it has encryption and because there's no way to reach the data uh, when the tape cartridge is offline. And it has great reliability and great uh, media lifetime, which makes it very uh, well suited, especially for uh, archival use cases. So, but how, however, the, out of all these, the, the, the net advantage of tape is low cost. So uh, people use tape primarily because it's cheaper uh, than, uh, than the alternatives, which is mainly uh, disk. So tape is, uh, is becoming interesting again for three uh, main reasons. The, the first one is that it can continue scaling uh, the capacity density and the, um, the, the how many bits you can uh, record per square inch of tape uh, very, uh, at a very uh, good rate, meaning uh, that we can sustain uh, this uh, roadmap that we have achieved over the last uh, few years to uh, very well into the future. So last year we demonstrated 200 uh, gigabit square bits, uh, bits per square inch, which basically would correspond to a cartridge uh, uh, with capacity of 330 terabytes. And uh, we have demonstrated that uh, tape can grow its capacity at about 40% uh, year, uh, year, uh, every year, which basically means that the, that the cost advantage versus disk will continue growing because disk is uh, growing at a much uh, lower pace. The, se the second development is the, the, the emergence of uh, the linear tape file system, LTFS, which for the first time gives us uh, a, standardized, uh, a standardized file interface for tape and allows us allows us to use tape as any other uh, type of removable media. And the third is that uh, because security is becoming so important for, for the cloud and because tape has all these nice security properties, this uh, makes it very appealing to cloud providers that want to uh, um, you know, guarantee the safety of the, of the data that they're storing. So what we're trying to do in IBM, at IBM Research is uh, make uh, tape easy to use because as you probably know or have heard, uh, tape comes with a lot of complexity and somebody who is not familiar with the intricacies of tape is not really uh, very easy to uh, use it in an effective way. So what we want to do is implement uh, software that uh, will deal with all the complexity of tape so that the user will not uh, need to. So uh, software will take uh, care of all, the, of all these things that um, uh, for, you know, physical and logical resources, including cartridges, dryers, libraries, and all these things that the, uh, a, a, you know, a, user that, a cloud user does not know about and does not want to know about. So the, the, uh, the, the way we do this is by implementing uh, various software components at different levels of the stack. And we uh, use these uh, this components in two different ways. Of course, on the one side, uh, there is uh, the, the products and solutions where we basically bundle uh, all these components together. We test them, we package them in a nice product, which then you can uh, go and buy on the market. And one such, such example is uh, Spectrum Archive. 
the other way is that we, we're contributing uh, some of these uh, components to the community as open source projects so that uh, users and developers that want to build uh, for tape and want to integrate tape in their own products and solutions can just uh, use them and uh, be able to interface with tape without having to, to, to deal with all the complexity. So let me uh, talk a little bit about the uh, linear tape file system. So LTFS basically uh, stands for two things. Uh, it's a standardized um, file system format specification. It's basically a standard, uh, a SNIA standard that uh, defines how, the, how data should be recorded in a tape cartridge, like how you write the data, how you write the metadata, and how you can, you're able to uh, retrieve them. And of course, it's open uh, and standard, but it also has the advantage that it, uh, the format that it defines is uh, self-describing and results in self-contained cartridges. So what this means is that uh, in an LTFS formatted cartridge, all the information that you need in order to uh, read the data and make sense out of the data is actually contained on that cartridge. So you don't uh, need any external information to read what you have written on a cartridge or to write new data to that uh, cartridge without destroying the old ones. On the, the other side of the coin is that LTFS is uh, also a file system uh, uh, software implementation that, be, that uh, IBM uh, released, I think, for the first time in uh, 2010 uh, as open source uh, code. And uh, this is important because uh, on the one hand, it uh, provides a standard POSIX uh, interface for access to files. So you can use it uh, in, the same, in the system in the same way that you would use any uh, POSIX compliant disk file system. It's, the, the code is open, so you can, uh, you can do uh, modifications, and it's also supported on multiple pl platforms. So today we're uh, supporting it on Windows, Linux, and uh, OS X. So what this means is basically that um, all these things make LTFS very uh, well suited for archival storage, because all these things uh, enable you to store data and read them back after many, many years, and you will still be able to uh, understand your data without relying on you know proprietary uh, software or any other type of external database or catalog or other things that you would uh, had up to now in proprietary uh, tape systems so overall LTFS is, is really important because uh, for the first time we have uh, a standard uh, a standardized uh, file system for tape and uh, it's the first time that we can use tape as any type of uh, as uh, any other type of uh, removable media in order to uh, read uh, and uh, write files. So uh, this picture basically shows uh, uh, the files on tape using LTFS. So this is actually uh, a tape drive that is uh, attached to a uh, Windows laptop over USB. And we have uh, mounted uh, a cartridge uh, using LTFS. And you see that in the file explorer in Windows, you cannot even tell the difference between uh, tape and disk. You're able to drag and drop files, you're able to copy, you're able to delete, you're able to rename and do all the standard things that you would do uh, with an HDD. So, um, we use uh, LTFS as the foundation in our, in our stack. And of course, at the, at the lowest level in the, in the stack, we have uh, the hardware that this, and by hardware, I mean uh, the tape libraries. Uh, that contain drives and robotics, uh, tape cartridges, uh, and all the uh, physical resources, the networking, and everything that is required to uh, physically access the data. And on top of, of this, we, we use uh, LTFS, uh, which uh, primarily comes in two uh, different flavors. So the first one uh, that historically appeared was LTFS Single Drive Edition, which is also uh, known, called Spectrum Archive Single Drive Edition today which uh, only uh, was the first version that implemented uh, reading and writing data using the LTFS format, and it only supports a single uh, tape drive, so there's no uh, control of, uh, of multiple uh, tape drives or library robotics. And this was uh, contributed to the uh, open source community in 2010. Uh, and then we have uh, an extension of the, of the first version, which is called Library Edition, which basically adds all the missing um, uh, support for uh, library automation and uh, basically allows you to uh, automatically mount, uh, move a cartridge uh, into a drive and mount it from the drive uh, and do all the, all, the, all the library control that is required in order to achieve that. So 
uh, LDF library edition allows you to see a single uh, physical or logical drive uh, library as a single file system. And how it looks like is as shown here, where we basically uh, have uh, a system with uh, three, a small library with three tape cartridges, which uh, in which every tape cartridge is presented uh, as a directory uh, under the LTFS mount point. And then, of course, uh, the name of the directory is the, the serial number of the, um, of, the, of the cartridge, and then you have the, hier the hierarchy of all the, of the files and the directories in that cartridge. So uh, using this, you can have a single file system view of your entire tape library. However, if you want to make this uh, tape backend part of a bigger storage system, then there's m many, many uh, com other things that you would need to deal with. For instance, if you're moving um, data from disk to tape, you have to think about how you manage multiple, multiple cartridges, like how does the user know uh, on which uh, tape cartridge to write to, how do you allocate resources, who can use what drive, who can use the library robotics, for how long, how the data moves from di disk to tape, and how it, you, know, you maintain uh, all the properties that you want to guarantee for the data. And of course, things like uh, how do the, all the background operations happen, and how they get scheduled, and how are all this, is all the tape uh, capacity virtualized. And this is basically what we're building on top of uh, LTFS and LTFS library edition. So this is where we come in. And uh, the first thing that we do is that we build data path and control path comp uh, components that allow you to move data from disk to, to tape and vice versa. So on the data path, we have uh, the two uh, boxes on the left. Uh, there are basically two um, different implementations of a data mover that can uh, move data from disk to tape. One is, uh, relies on, the, on DMAPI, which is a special uh, file system uh, API that unfortunately not all file systems uh, implement. And the other one is based on Fuse, where basically the data mover, we create an overlay file system on, on top of the disk file system and the tape file system. And that data mover uh, uh, you know, takes care of moving the data from disk to tape and vice versa. But probably the, the most important piece at, at that level of the stack is the, the, the tape control path, which is basically the component that keeps track of uh, all the resources in your tape backend and schedules all the operations in a way that uh, allows your system to have uh, good performance and good uh, resource utilization. Now, as we have this, um, these connectors uh, between disk and tape, the next step is to actually go and do integration with disk file systems. And on the one hand, we have what started as uh, LTFS Enterprise Edition, which is now called Spectrum Archive, and which basically integrates uh, a disk file system uh, with a tape backend. And in this case, the disk file system is the GPFS uh, cluster file system. Uh, I mean, this is an IBM uh, product. Uh, today is also called uh, Spectrum Scale. And uh, it provides you seamless um, uh, migration of data from disk to tape. And basically what I'll, I'll expand a little bit more about today is LTFS data management, which is basically the equivalent uh, of Spectrum Archive, but for open file systems. So, so that you can use your ext3 or your XFS file system in your, uh, in your cloud VM without, uh, and be able to transparently move the, the data to tape in a way that is open end to end. And of course, on top of that, there is uh, an even uh, higher abstraction layer that has to do with how you move, how you integrate tape with object storage. And we have a couple of projects there. Uh, some of, uh, of it is already uh, open source, and it allows you to move uh, OpenStack Swift containers uh, from disk to tape without any, uh, like with a click of a button. Uh, and, and this basically completes the picture. Yeah, some of these are uh, already, as I said, uh, open source. Of course, the, pro the product is proprietary, and there's a lot of uh, m many of these components that will be uh, that are being open sourced as we speak, basically. So let me give you an idea of uh, what Spectrum Archive is today. So you have uh, a global uh, GBFS uh, file system uh, on top of multiple um, storage pools that can be uh, flash, that can be disk uh, or tape. And GPFS pre presents you a single global namespace uh, by which you can uh, access the files, all, no matter whether uh, they're stored on flash, on, on, on disk, or on tape. So, and it comes with uh, a very sophisticated policy engine that allows you to do lifecycle management. So you can, uh, using this uh, policy engine, you can basically uh, move data from flash to disk when they become cold, 
and when they become even colder, you can uh, migrate them from uh, tape, from disk to tape. The files remain in the, in, the, in the file system namespace, and when a user, so a user does not need to change the way they're accessing the files. If a file they have, uh, they, they, they want to access has already been migrated to tape, then uh, they, they still uh, access it in the same way as before, and the file system, of course, knows that the file is, uh, has been migrated to tape and will go to the tape tier and recall it. So this is exactly what we want to do uh, with LTFS data management, but as I said, for any, uh, uh, you know, POSIX uh, uh, file system, and in particular for open file systems like ext3, ext4, XFS, and the like. So uh, this is uh, how the, the, the picture looks like. So LTFS data management has three main components, a control path, a data path, and some uh, admin tooling. And it sits between uh, a disk file system and the tape and the underlying base uh, tape, uh, tape file system, which is uh, LTFS library edition. And it manages how the, how the data moves from the, uh, from the disk file system to the tape file system and vice versa. And as I said earlier, there are two implementations, front end connector to the disk file system. We mostly focus on the, on the, on the fuse based uh, connector because it gives us more flexibility and supports, uh, can support uh, more uh, disk based file systems. For the rest of the components, uh, the data path basically forms the bridge for the data between disk and tape. Uh, it subscribes to file system uh, events uh, on the disk file system, and based on these events, it can understand when the data becomes uh, hot or cold, and when uh, migrated data, data needs to be recalled uh, because the user is accessing it. And it facilitates all this uh, data movement from uh, disk to tape, so it, it not only copies the, the data blocks and the metadata, but it also does a synchronization to guarantee, for instance, that uh, to guarantee correctness where uh, a file that is being migrated is also being updated by the user and all these different co corner cases that you can have. And it also makes sure that the appropriate data uh, blocks can be deleted from the disk so that you can uh, save capacity. The control, the, the admin uh, tooling is basically uh, a CLI that allows, enables you to do a monitoring administration and also gives you some explicit control of where to migrate a file or a directory on tape so that you can explicitly override uh, the system and say that I want my PowerPoint files to be uh, always uh, on disk and, and uh, you know, or I want a, a certain uh, subdirectory in my home di directory to be recalled from tape because I want to access uh, it uh, quickly. Now, the multi-tape management module is basically a component that has uh, a threefold uh, purpose. The, f the first uh, reason why we need it is in order to virtualize tape, tape capacity. So we have a, a tape library with uh, hundreds of uh, cartridges, and what the MMM does is that it allows you to create virtual storage pools on top of these uh, cartridges so that you can, for instance, assign a certain uh, storage pool to a user or to a department. So, and then, uh, you know, you can con configure a storage pool to have 100 cartridges, which you give to user A, and when the user uh, wants to uh, migrate data to, from disk to tape, the user doesn't need to know anything about uh, drives or libraries or cartridges. It only needs to know that it has uh, a virtual storage pool called uh, pool one, for instance. The second uh, purpose is that uh, the uh, MMM um, deals with uh, scheduling of the operations and um, making sure that the, all the, 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 the jobs are executed in the most um, optimized way. So it takes a, as input the uh, a number of requests that are generated by the user or the system. And it, it con continuously talks to the, to the tape library to, fi to figure out you know, which operations are outstanding, which resources are busy, which resources are idle, and which resources can be reused. And it, so it, it, it maintains a, a, a job queue uh, in which uh, this, all these requests get complete, co continuously uh, rescheduled and uh, re uh, uh, requeued in order to uh, optimize for different objectives. For instance, you typically, MMM will make sure that you know, uh, for foreground operations like file recalls will always have a uh, 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 higher priority than background operations and uh, things like that. So that there's many different ways to configure objectives for uh, the MMM. And you can optimize for different uh, objectives, like for instance, um, uh, maximize the bandwidth uh, of your system is one objective. Uh, maximize, ma maximizing the collocation of your files 
on tape cartridges is a different objective. So a, a user can say that I want all the files from my home directory to be grouped on the same cartridge so that when I recall them, I don't want to load 10 different cartridges. I can get them all at once from a single cartridge. And as you can see, I mean, some of these objectives, uh, like uh, th these two, for instance, are uh, mutually exclusive. I mean, if you want to maximize bandwidth, you want to write to as many cartridges as possible. If you want to uh, maximize collocation, you want to uh, write to a single cartridge to the uh, extent possible. And the third uh, uh, purpose is to uh, that MMM uh, gives you a global uh, view of all the resources in the system so that you can find out what's going on by uh, looking at a single place. Uh, let me quickly uh, talk about the different states that the file can have in the system. So uh, every file starts uh, in the resident state where all the, all the blocks of the file are stored on disk. And then uh, when we want to move that file to tape, we do uh, a process which is called pre-migration that basically copies all the data blocks and the data uh, and the metadata blocks to tape. So you, for each disk file, you create a tape file, and you add a pointer from the uh, disk inode to the uh, to the LTFS file. And, th and that pointer is basically just the serial number of the tape cartridge where the data is written. And uh, if you have that, you can uh, reach the data very quickly. Now, up to uh, this point, we have not really saved uh, any disk space. So if if we want to uh, to do that, then we do. Uh, we move the file to the migrated state, which where basically what that means is that we just delete the data blocks from disk, and then all that remains on disk is the is the inode for the file, and all the data for the file are stored uh, on tape. And uh, when that file gets accessed, we can quickly go and f and uh, fetch uh, the, the data from the file uh, from tape and uh, serve it back to the user. Now, uh, as an example, uh, here you see a single disk file system where you have uh, uh, a single disk. Uh, XFS deploying to, on top of it and the user accessing the file, the, that file system. When we want to deploy LTFS DM, all we need to do is that uh, in addition to, to that, to the disk file system, we also uh, deploy LTFS, the LTFS library edition on top of uh, two tape drives in, in this example. And then we load LTFS DM. And what LTFS DM will do is that it will create, uh, it will uh, move the, your old disk mount point somewhere else and it will ma create a fuse file system at that mount point that will now virtualize both uh, disk and tape and in the background will be able to do to move data from one to the other uh, without uh, any uh, user uh, intervention. So basically the user continues to to talk to the same mount point and access the file in the same way that it uh, they were accessing it before. But if the file is on disk, it will be fetched from disk. If the, if the file is on tape, then uh, LTFS DM will go and fetch the file from tape and put it back to disk or serve it uh, to the user. Uh, LTFSDM uh, supports mul multiple fu uh, functions, like the basic ones, of course, are migration and recall, so moving uh, data from disk to tape and uh, bringing them back from tape to disk. The virtualization of cartridges that I described earlier with storage pools. It also allows you to do replication uh, if you want to, to store multiple copies of a file uh, on different cartridges or different tape libraries. It allows you to specify the degree of uh, collocation that you want in the system and uh, so that you can group uh, your uh, logically and phys physically group your data together uh, on a small set of cartridges and some other, um, some other uh, features that have to do with uh, managing the life cycles, the life cycle of your files as they're stored on tape. So it has a, uh, a, a command line interface uh, with uh, many uh, commands that allow you to do uh, administration, monitoring, and control how uh, things are working uh, in the background. Uh, this follows just the typical uh, you know, conventions for uh, file system utilities. There's nothing very, uh, very special there. But what I wanted to point out is that uh, uh, LTFS data management um, is being uh, open sourced. So we're at the process of setting up the public repo. and. Uh, we uh, want to, to contribute it to the community and work with the community to uh, make sure that it, it, it's a, it can support multiple different use cases with uh, different uh, tape backends. And we're uh, talking with uh, the other mem members of the LDO consortium to make sure that uh, you know, different uh, hardware platforms will be supported. And so with this, I'd like to invite everybody who would be interested to uh, try it out and reach out to us 
uh, if they want to find out more about it or if they have uh, difficulties uh, using it or if they want if they have some use case that is does not cover or some extension that they would like to see implemented so this is not something that we intend to to keep it to ourselves but we really uh, aim to uh, to share it with the with the wider community and with that uh, thank you for your attention Thank you.